everyone. Welcome back to AWS On Air. My name is Jeff Mershak. I'm a senior solutions architect on our DOD Air Force team, but we are live from Washington, D.C. at the 2023 AWS D.C. Summit. And with me, I have two guests, Nicole and Tulip, and we're going to talk about uh, observability, but not in one account, but across multiple accounts. So, uh, Nicole, do you want to introduce yourself? Absolutely. Hi, everyone. My name is Nicole Murray. I'm a senior solutions architect based out of New York City. I focus on our state and local government accounts, and I'm looking forward to talking to you about cross-account cross observability. Cool. Tulip? Hey, I'm Tulip Gupta. I'm a senior solution architect with the strategic accounts, and I'm here to talk about cross-account observability as well. Welcome. So, why should we or customers care about cross-account observability? Well, I'll take that and say it depends. Uh, cross-account observability is very important if you're working with uh, central IT or so on. Mm -hmm. So if you find yourself as an engineer having multiple AWS accounts in which you host many workloads, you probably don't want to have to log in to each account sure. to identify you know, how your application is performing or the operational health of your infrastructure. So we've... Uh, come up with this feature of enabling cross-account observability to give you that single pane of glass uh, to view the operational health of your infrastructure. Yeah, and I see, it uh, looks like we have a, a slide that coming up here about three pillars of observability. Can you walk us through that? Absolutely. So I always like to set the stage to understand what you need to look into when you are observing your account. And we've got three pillars of observability. Um, it includes metrics, logs, and traces. And metrics, that's a feature of CloudWatch. Uh, they give you information about the performance of your systems. So by default, if you've used AWS, you've probably seen that many services provide you with free metrics, right, to view the operational health of your resource, like EC2, our virtual servers, or uh, our relational database services like RDS. Uh, you'll also notice logs there. Um, logs, you can also find that in CloudWatch. Effectively, those are immutable, they're time-stamped, and they give you records of discrete events within your environment. Um, usually, it's really awesome for using uh, logs to uh, uncover, let's say, emergent or unpredictable issues within your environment. Now, the last one is near and dear to me. That one's called Traces, and we use a service called X-Ray to provide you with that kind of information. Traces provide you with, let's say, the life cycle of a packet. So from the moment a client makes a request to your application, every single internal or external endpoint that your application needs to interact with in order to provide the value of that workload, well, we can trace that using X-Ray. And as we talk about the, a microservice architecture, that packet might talk to a number of different microservices, and each of those microservices could be behaving in a different way, and sounds like X-Ray will help you figure out where the problem is. That's right, and I think the value that a lot of our customers see in that is, it's probably simple to see the operational health of the services that are within uh, AWS, like S3 or the RDS, data, uh, your database services, but what if you don't own that application right. that you're actually hitting? That's another thing that you're going to want to trace. And you'll see with, during the demonstration that Tulip does how you can use that to see what impacted your application and what happened on the other end while your, you know, your service didn't work. Sounds good. I'll also come in and talk a little bit about what you're going to see in the demonstration. When we say that you have cross-account observability, as you, can see, as you can see on screen, we have multiple workload accounts. And what we've done now is centralize all of that information within uh, a single monitoring account. So that's just going to give you a holistic view of your services. You'll also see that you have the ability to trace those requests. You're going to see quite a bit of that within a demonstration. You'll also have the ability to view basic information about each request. Now, once I hand it over to Tulip, you'll see how we integrate those accounts to enable this cross-account observability within a single monitoring account. You'll also see how we create that unified observability view. I will say I now take quite a bit of calls on operational health, and every customer is going to ask you about building that single pane of glass, yeah, right? Yep, you can't get off a call without hearing that at least once. Yes. Um, you're also going to see a view of a trace, what kind of information we show you and collect about those segments or about those endpoints that you're interacting with. And of course, you're going to see how we correlate all those logs and traces and metrics into a single environment. So with that, I'll pause here so we can finally dig in and see what it all looks like when it works together. Sounds Thank good. Thank you, Nicole. So let's just switch over and go to our demo. All right. Awesome. Cool. 
Uh, so here uh, we are looking at one of the source accounts. So what do we mean by source accounts? Is where like you might be currently using having AWS accounts where you, where you have set up your X-ray, you have set up your CloudWatch, so and you have your application loaded out there. So I have a sample account out here, a demo account that I've created uh, for to show you the demo. Um, and here I'm going to go log, log into CloudWatch, and under CloudWatch. I have, um, so I have like actually deployed an application called Pet Adoptions. So if I go into my extra service map, as you can see, my Pet Adoption application is already emitting all the traces and is available under the service node map out here. And as Nicole covered, like if you have your extra agent installed on your ECS or your, or your ECT or your Lambda, you'll be able to see this X-ray service map and see all the nodes out here. So can you just walk through a few of these to kind of explain what each of these uh, circles are? Yeah, so the, each of the circles are the nodes. So these are nodes, like let's say, like um, let me zoom in a little bit as well. So one of them is the pet list about adoption. So each of these are service that's hosted on ECS Fargate. Now your pet search, so like let's say like a client call comes in, from the left, like a client request comes in, it, re it hits your pet search service, and then the request goes on to your DynamoDB table. So you can see the request flow from the client to the pet search to the services, and the black arrows are what your traces are showing how the request is flowing. Uh, I do want to point out, your pet search is marked as red on the top. I see that, okay, cool. And this indicates there is some error associated with it. So if I click on that, you'll be able to see like what the errors are. So apparently it has like 3% faults and the metric shows out here. So that way you can deep dive. If you see there's an error happening in one of the services, you can click on it, go into our metrics and see why that error happened and helps you root cause easily. Well, this is neat because I have a lot of DBA friends and a lot of people just assume, oh, it's a database problem. But, but right, right now in, in two seconds, you can clearly see that Dynamo DB is being just fine. Yeah. There's no errors, and in fact, there's a latency problem. So, just the visualization itself is very valuable. Yes, yes, and there's more visualizations as well after this. Uh, so this is just one part, the X-ray. Now, if you go into the logs, you'll be able to see all the logs associated with the pet adoption application, and these are all there, like uh, for the for API gateway, containers, Lambda, like everything under logs, under CloudWatch logs. So CloudWatch is a native tool for collecting uh, logs from all your AWS services, and it uh, stores out here under log groups. Uh, the third part I do want to point out is the metrics, and you can set up custom metrics, and uh, CloudWatch also provides you some metrics that are associated with your services, as you can see out here. Now my pet adoption has services like DynamoDB API Gateway, and it automatically shows you some like default metrics that are available with each of the services. And the last one I do want to point out before we actually move on to cross-account observability is how you can correlate all of these views under a single pane of view. And that's where CloudWatch Service Lens comes in. So when I click on CloudWatch Service Lens on the left, as you can see, you can see the same uh, node service map that we saw under X-ray, but there's more to it. If we go and click on the same pet adoption, set pet search out here, pet site, you can see the same view. But if you go into the dashboard now, you can actually like see all the latency, all the metrics out here, your traces down below, and you're also able to select any of the services you want under this uh, arrow out here. Uh, so it's easy, you're able to like easily navigate it from one service to the other, look at the metrics, look at the traces, and look at the logs. Um, let's click on one of the Lambda functions out here. So now you've just chosen a specific Lambda function, and we're going to see the metrics specific to that specific function. Yes. Uh, so CloudWatch Service Lens helps you like correlate uh, your logs, traces, and metrics, and that's what we are looking at. So we looked at like how traces and metrics can be correlated, and in under Lambda, you can see like how traces, metrics, and logs can be correlated under the single pane of view. Gotcha. Okay, so now let's pretend we're in the dev account for this pet adoption application. You're going to want a QA account with a QA version and then a production. And I imagine you're going to want a single pane of glass to see all the metrics across your different environments. Yeah. How does that work? 
Yes, so this is your source account. Now we want to create a monitoring account. And the way we do it is, so I have a monitoring account set up. Um, and if I go out here um, and click on CloudWatch, the way we do it right now is we set up us, uh, one account as the monitoring account, which will be able to co collect all the metrics from your source account. So as you can see, I've already enabled it as my monitoring account. And the way you can do it is you can manage source accounts out here, uh, get your, uh, like the, all the source accounts that you want to connect to this monitoring account uh, connected out here, and it's pretty easy to add. So you can add and delete accounts. I have uh, my source account collected out here, uh, the configuration details, and um, I'll copy this link. So if I want to uh, have more source accounts added, uh, so it's a two-way view, like monitoring account gets permission to view uh, the logs, traces, and metrics from your source accounts, and the source accounts give permission to share its log, traces, and metrics view to the monitoring account. Okay. So, uh, so yeah, so this is my monitoring account. It's already been enabled, and if I go to my service map out here, um, as you can see, I can see the same view because it's able to view that uh, from the source account under uh, monitoring account as yep. well. Um, so right, if you have like more than one uh, source accounts or more like an you know, application is hosted across multiple accounts, uh, you can, you're able to like collect it from like let's say 10 accounts to like 100,000 accounts and like put it onto this monitoring account and be able to view it across accounts rather than logging onto each individual account. And, and for example, like uh, one of the teams that I'm working with at Audible uh, was able to like leverage this and save over 60% time in debugging time because they had, didn't have to log into individual accounts to be able to trace yep. and like deep dive into the root cause. Now, Tulip, what if I have 10 accounts in there? It's going to be tough to see, to look and view all of my applications. Can you show us how to filter uh, to show just one account and how that's operating within this console? Yeah. So let's say like, you know, if you go into log groups, so your log groups is collecting uh, your data from all the source accounts. So right now, like, you know, I have only one source account. You're able to see the account ID out here. And you are able to, like, you know, go, uh, like if you have more than one source account, uh, like I, this is just my demo, um, you'll be able to see all the logs groups from all the different source accounts, uh, be it like 10, be it 100, be it like 100,000. So all of them would be available out here, and you're able to like you know filter it out to particular accounts to see what log came from which account. Now, one thing that I've seen within my customers is they've been doing a migration of about 30 applications to, to AWS, and one of the most difficult parts that they had to handle was how do you troubleshoot as you're migrating your apps. They were able to hand out this info, uh, this dashboard over to their help desk teams mm -hmm. so that their help desk teams could let's say contextualize some of that information for any errors that are being reported by their, uh, by their customers and actually put more meaningful information into those service tickets that were then sent down to the developers. So instead of just saying, oh no, the app is down, they can actually say, hey, the app is down, we took a look at the service map. And we know it's not the database. And we yeah. know it's not the database. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, exactly. But what's really cool about that too, if it was the database, yeah. I'd be able to go to the to the um, database node, yeah. look at where it says SQL, because there is an option for that, and it will show me the exception yeah. that the SQL database provided when I tried it's to a make a call to it. It's a query or it's something storage related. That's right. Yeah. Or my database was down. Yeah. Something as simple as that. So you'll yeah. be able to find that within the console as well, within the, the service map as well. That's called a callback when we reference something we said earlier in the I like show. That. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. I like that. So uh, we're near time. Is there anything else you'd like to share? Uh, how do people who are interested in this multi-account observability um, could get started? Any workshops or how would you end this session yeah. with people that are interested? I would take a look. We do have a workshop called the One Observability Workshop. It is all things observability yes. on AWS. Take a, look at, take a look at it because it shows all about metrics. It talks about logs. It dives deep into what we talked about with x-ray traces. Yep. And if you're interested in open source tooling, AWS does support that as well. And that workshop calls out a couple different uh, well, excuse me, that workshop includes a couple different scenarios for how to leverage things like Prometheus, uh, Grafana, and uh, open telemetry to provide similar functionality like what you see here. I do want to add, there's like AWS documents as well that sure. you can like actually leverage to look at like cross-account observability. 
uh, there's one other thing like cross account and cross region observability, which actually like lets you share your alarms and your log widgets and your like metrics. Uh, it doesn't let you share traces. Cross account observability, that the one that I showed, allows you to share your log traces and metrics uh, in the same region, but across accounts. Right. So, Awesome. Well, Tulip and Nicole, thank you very much for joining us for this session. We are AWS On Air live in Washington, D.C. I'm Jeff Mershak, and we will be right back after this quick word with our next segment. Thank you.